What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mod 7 to the Sky. So, guys, last episode, we were making a dirt. Mm -hmm. We set up a sugarcane farm, letting it grow all the way up to the sky. We set up a way to auto compost the sugarcane that we've collected, turning that into dirt. And we set up a redstone timer down here using some observers and a sticky piston so we can turn it off and on should we choose to. Also, it helps speed up the uh, the redstone pulse that we were giving our sugar cane <laughs> to make it grow that much faster. All right, so this episode, I wanted to try and get a way for us to automatically collect this stuff a little bit easier than me having to walk around and manually pick this all up. I improved it a little bit by covering over the water sources we had over here with uh, topside slabs. So we have waterlogged slabs here. So it still provides hydration. It still allows the sugarcane to grow next to it, but we don't have to worry about dropping into it all the time. As, like when we're walking through to pick up our sugarcane. Yeah, it just makes life a little bit easier anyway. Just a small little, small little uh, quality of life improvement there. Um, but yeah, I wanted a way for us to take the sugarcane that we are growing and actually collect it automatically so I don't have to walk around and pick it all up myself because while this is fun, it gets old pretty quickly. <laughs> let's be honest. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and just turn this off. Oh, let's go ahead and turn that off. Pew. Uh, yeah, we uh, have plenty of dirt collecting. In fact, I think we have over a stack right now. Almost two stacks. Look at that. Uh, almost two stacks of dirt we have collected. Um, so yeah, we'll just let that chill for the time being. Let's try and figure out a way that we can get ourselves some kind of a vacuum. So if we search for a vacuum, uh, we have a vacuum hopper, absorption hopper actually. That requires obsidian, which we could make, I suppose. I have ender, we need ender pearls. And then a hopper, we know how to make that. The other thing I was kind of looking at, what are these? Hold on a second. Vacuum tube module, vacuum pump. I think that's for fluids, actually. Vacuum trap. Looks like a Ghostbuster trap. Uh, that requires pressure and stuff. So the other thing is the vacuumulator from thermal, thermal expansion. I think this is the way we're going to go. Uh, it still does require an ender pearl, though, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, so we're gonna need some tin ingots, some glass, a hopper, and then a redstone servo. And the redstone servo is just two redstone and iron. That's easy enough. So let's go ahead and craft one of these and just see, uh, what happens here. So iron and redstone. Boop, boop. We got a redstone, a servo. And then the vacuumulator itself, we needed some tin. Uh, we have not smelted any. I'm sure we have tin in here somewhere, though. Raw tin. Here we go. Let's grab some of those and a piece of coal. We'll just... Put that over here and get that smelter reading. Boop, boop. All right, so that's doing its thing. And then for, uh, we also need glass too. So we need some sand to smelt. I only have one piece of sand. That's not going to do it for us. Uh, we do have some sand blocks here, so we'll unblockify that. I need one more piece of coal. All right, and we will smelt up some glass as well. So we'll throw, wait, what is this? Osmium. Osmium? How much osmium do I have over here? I guess that much. Okay, so we want that and that. And then we needed four tin. But I guess it won't really matter because we got to wait for two of these anyway. So besides the tin and that, we're going to need this ender pearl. So we can't really do anything without the ender pearl. So how do you get an ender pearl? So enderman essence. Uh-huh. We could make a mob farm and kill enderman directly. Uh, if we had a philosopher's stone, looks like four iron turns into one. How do you make a philosopher's stone? Hmm. I think this is the way we're gonna go. So some gunpowder, some blaze powder, and a gold ingot makes the philosopher's stone. And with that, we can transmute iron into ender pearls. Now there's some other things that I was looking at this that I can do. Check it out. So w the philosopher's stone with one emerald can make two diamonds. You turn one coal into four charcoal. We could be way more efficient with our smelting operation over here. And there's uh, 4,085 pages worth of stuff <laughs> that we can do. So not uh, eight iron turns into a gold. And yeah, there is a lot of recipes. Oh, wait, this is literally showing every recipe in the game. This isn't showing just these. Uh, yeah, and then you can also take it and transmute things in the world to two different things. So that is also a thing. So you can turn lava directly into obsidian, I think, by clicking on it somehow. I forget how this thing works. It's been a while. You can turn melons into pumpkins, 
Uh, anything else? You can change wood into different wood types. So that's pretty cool. Leaves into different leaf types. Saplings into different sapling types. Um, there's a lot of options here. Anyway, let's not look at that for forever. Let's actually make the thing that we're trying to make here. So the vacuumulator. So yeah, we have everything except for the hopper and the ender pearl. So let's look at making the philosopher's stone. So I need four blase powder. I need four gunpowder. I don't remember the rest. It was one gold ingot. One gold ingot. We happen to have everything. Okay, so Philosopher's Stone, click it, boom. I made the advancement an alchemist's best friend. Okay, and then there's four of those. So this, boop, boop, and there's an Ender Pearl. Sweet. All right, so now we needed to make ourselves a hopper, I believe, was the, uh, the final thing that we needed here. So I need a chest. So there is that. Make a chest, then put some iron around it, boom. So that... This, I don't remember the recipe. Let's click over here so I don't have to try and figure it out. There it is, Vacuumulator. Boom, easy. So this thing, I believe is configurable. You put augments in it. You can uh, turn it on and off with a redstone signal. I don't know what the augmentations are for it. Um, is there a way I can click in here and see them? No. So let's go thermal. And there are upgrades in here somewhere. I'm not seeing them here they are maybe okay one of these radial enhancer area effect it doesn't show what machines these work on type dynamo type area effect maybe this is what we need is the radial enhancement okay well anyway anyway uh you know what i was also thinking this thing Oh, right here. Picks up items, filter, configuration, will apply, keep those floors clean. I was thinking this thing had a way that we could um, pipe out of it. So I was going to stick it on top of the chest and have it pipe down into the chest, but it doesn't look like that's a thing, but I assume a hopper can pull out of this. So if we set a filter specifically for sugarcane, we should be able to set that on top of the hopper and the hopper should be able to extract and keep this going. So that will replace our chest, I think. So that is what we're going to try here. Let me get rid of this. Break this. I need an axe, by the way. I haven't really made much, many tools, have I? <laughs> All right, so I'll place that there. And I, how do you set a filter? Filter configuration will apply. Can I do thermal filter? Okay, so we can do a filter. That is 10 nuggets and a signalum ingot. And you make that signalum blend or dust. So that is three copper, four redstone, and a silver. Okay, well that's going to be a little bit of stuff, and I don't think we have a way to crush. I am interested for this mass raider. Uh, there's a mechanism crushing machine. We might look at making this thing. Okay, well hold on just a moment. Let me think about this. All right, I had forgotten that we made this uh, ore hammer thing, right? This will crush ores for us until we actually get machines. So I don't have to make the mechanism machine. So we'll do that for the nickel and we'll do this for actually was it nickel. I think it was silver. We'll do that for uh, the copper. Let me go back here real quick. It was silver, not nickel. Why did I grab nickel? I don't know. Uh, silver, silver, silver. We have silver, don't we? Aluminum, lead, silver. Here it is. Uh, yeah, we just need one of those. So there is the silver plus this, and there's our silver dust. All right, so if we put silver dust, some copper, some redstone, there's some signalum dust, and I believe we just take that and smelt it in a furnace. Did Yeah, we're fine. Uh, yeah, we just smelt it in a furnace over here, and we get our ingots that we're looking for. Awesome. Okay, so now that we have that, we should... Oh, I... Didn't bookmark the filter, but it's still here. We should be able to do this. Now, I needed 10 nuggets, so we have 10 ingot. We will nuggify that. We need one of those. I think that is basically it. Our weathered salesman is, like, facing this way now instead of straight ahead. I don't know what he's staring at. I don't know what he's looking at. What are you looking at, guy? Anything interesting over there? There's, like, nothing over there. All right. Well, we'll let him be. Uh, <laughs> so, 10 Plus the signalum. There's our item filter. Do I right click on this? Shift right click. I place it in here. Oh, that made a sound. Item filter. Okay. And then we will just filter sugarcane. 
So deny list, allow list, ignore MBT. I don't think that matters. So the question I have is how far away does this pick things up? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> does it actually work? Hello? It's not picking up from right there. Did it pick? Uh, I don't even know if this thing works. Is this thing even working? Let's break it. Let's try uh, seeing this on the ground somewhere. So if I do that and this. Hello? Uh, redstone control ignore. I've picked it up eventually. Hey, there's two sugar cane in this. So it picks it up very slowly. But the question is like, how far away does this work? Oh, okay. Well, it's still picking it up over here. So that's one, two, three, four. So it does it in a nine by nine. That actually should be pretty good. Now, uh, maybe we will arrange this. I We also got to figure out height. Uh, but what I'm thinking is we can like scooch this forward, move this hopper down so it points into the side and places on top. Yeah, I need to figure out like the height of this thing. All right, so we're doing a little experiment here. Uh, we have the accumulator right there, throwing the uh, sugar cane on the ground. It appears to be able to pick it up a block below, so that's good. Let's move it up a block. Can I pick it up down here? I cannot. So it is a nine by nine by three, I would assume, centered on this block. So if I move this over, that would be... So it would have a hopper here, it'd be at the level of this hopper, which is... I think this is not going to work correctly unless I move this all down. Or we switch over to pipes, or we do something completely different. Uh, I can move this hopper to the ground and move the chest down one. Alright, well, I'm gonna play around with this a little bit, see if I can get a setup that'll actually work for us, and then we'll be right back. Yeah, so after playing around with this for a little bit, I think this is going to work. Uh, this is not going to be the final thing, but for right now, all I have to do is come over there and punch it, and the vacuumulator seems to collect most of the sugar cane. There is some that might be going a little out of its range, although I don't see any right now. Um, but yeah, it's picking it all up. It's going into this. The hopper is removing it and setting it down here. Uh, so eventually this is going to fill up, and then we'll have sugar cane on the ground. Uh, I'm not really sure the best way to handle all of that. Uh, we probably need more technology <laughs> in order for us to do that. I think honestly the best thing to do would be have like a glass tube or something that the sugar cane goes up in so when you break it it all falls straight down or we just have something that's like looking at the block and breaking it as soon as it appears. So maybe there's like a block breaker or something that we could do that would uh, work better for us. Um, but for right now this is definitely an improvement. So we saw the Philosopher's Stone has some uses, right? Uh, we can convert iron into gold, and we can convert gold into iron. Well, we're just about out of iron, and we have lots of gold, and we have a way to double it using this iron ore hammer. So I went ahead and I just took half a stack of our raw gold, and I turned it into a full stack of the gold dust, and we're smelting that down. There we go, there's 35 ingots of it. Uh, so we should be able to take this and convert this into about two stacks of iron, I think, if I remember correctly. Let's do that and check it out. Yes, yeah, so now we have lots of iron. We don't have to worry about that too much anymore. And we still have over a stack of gold. So we could turn that into two stacks of gold dust, and then that would convert into eight stacks of iron, right? So, yeah, we are doing pretty good on the iron situation. I was a little concerned we only had a few ingots remaining, but now we don't have to worry about that. Anyway, the reason why I brought that up is because, uh, getting back to this thing, if we let this grow super tall and we harvest it, uh, Sugar King is going outside of the range of the Vacuumulator, and I wanted to make this radial enhancement. I assume this is what's going to work for it. <laughs> I don't know. But you can see here that we have sugarcane that's like landing just outside its range and just staying there, unfortunately. Uh, but it, yeah, I wanted to make this thing and check it out. And it does require a whole lot of iron in the recipe. So it's uh, four iron plus a nugget. So uh, per gear, right? And I believe it's two of those. And then you need some uh, tin and then some servo action happening here. I'm going to end up making two of these things, I assume 
we're gonna need two. But we have plenty of iron to do this with anyway, so it's not really a big deal. So we need four of those, and then, whoop, that is not four, there we go. And then those in the center. All right, so we have that and that, and we need four tin ingots. Actually, do we have four tin? Uh, we made tin earlier, I just sorted it, now I don't see it. <laughs> That's Osmium. Oh no, did we not? Okay, well, now I gotta go make some tin. All right, so the tin has been smelted, and here's our radial enhancement. We have two of those. Let's go ahead and pop that in this machine and see if it actually will pick up this stuff. Hopefully it actually goes in here. Okay, so it just went in there. Did it pick up any extra? I don't know. Oh, there's definitely stuff gone, but did it despawn? This is a little bit lower because it's on the piston, so this one doesn't matter. Uh, so let's see. If we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight? I don't know. Does it only go by one? So there's eight. I would expect it to pick it up on this block. One, two, three, four, five. So plus two should be right there, unless this just doesn't work. Well, it picked it up a little bit further, so I wonder how much this is actually... Do those stack? Those don't stack. Maximum radius plus one. Maybe this only... Maybe you can only put one in there. Uh, let me try that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, you know what? It was only four away, including the block that it was on, right? So that would be, that was a nine by nine. Okay, yeah, that, it does stack. It does make sense. So both of those do work. So I was looking over the comments of the last episode, and somebody did mention that there is a small block breaker from Engineer's Decor. Um, these metal bars, you put three iron and a diagonal and you get 12 of these. So we have six re remaining. We can make another one of those from uh, the three iron. But anyway, uh, so we're gonna try this just to see. I assume I place it this way. Nope, I place it the other way. We're gonna see how this thing works. Okay, well that uh, works about as well as I would have expected that to work. And since we're breaking it one block at a time, maybe two blocks, I guess, depending on tick updates. I don't think we needed the uh, extended range on the vacuumulator, but I didn't realize that until just a moment ago. So uh, maybe we can repurpose that vacuumulator for something else later on. But one thing I am definitely going to want is for us to mute that sound. So uh, let's come in here to the muffler. All right, after looking through our muffler settings for a little bit here, I was able to narrow down the sounds that we needed. If we click over here to the muffled, we can see it's block grass place, and then also have a block wool hit. If I turn this off, for some reason, the sugarcane landing on the snad sometimes makes wool sounds. It's really weird. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it in the video or not, uh, but yeah, with that unmuted, you can definitely, well, I can definitely hear it. So we're going to keep that muted for now. We're not hitting any wool anytime soon. Uh, so let's go back in here. Wool hit, turn that. And then the other one I thought was kind of weird is block grass place. Why is it placing grass instead of, um, I guess breaking grass would be the sound I would have expected. But anyway, uh, long story short, <laughs> we have this completely silenced now. So we are no longer hearing it. But it is growing, it is doing stuff, and then we can just turn this off whenever, as we do, by uh, retracting that piston. Well, I guess it'll still grow, but it won't be growing constantly like this. So I keep putting it off, but let's go ahead and make some tools. I don't know why I've been putting it off, I just guess I haven't felt like I needed them, but... Uh, yeah, there is a chapter dedicated for us to do some Tinker's Construct stuff. Um, the one that's labeled Tinker's Construct. It's kind of weird how this doesn't have a graphical image. I noticed that certain ones, I was kind of clicking through these, like Productive Bees has this image here, and I think, uh, Thermal, well, I guess Thermal doesn't either. Anyway, um, so Tinker's Construct, we start over here at the beginning. There's also this, I guess that's not active yet. And we also have this one, Plate Armor. I don't know what the Plate Armor is. Maybe this is like some mod for Tinker's. Anyway, uh, whoops, I didn't mean to click on that. Let's start here. Welcome to Tinker's Construct. Tinker's Construct is all about creating custom tools and armor by creating individual parts that combine to make bigger and better tools. It also adds new ways to smelt ores with custom multi-block smelteries for all your smelting needs. All right, so I am not new to Tinker's. This is a mod that I'm very familiar with. 
Uh, patterns, so this wants us to make six patterns here. And patterns are made with planks and sticks. We'll just go and bookmark that. Looks like we're going to need two recipes to fulfill what this wants. Uh, so we'll just do this, this. Uh, actually, need more sticks. Uh, this, this, and this, that. So there's six of those. That should complete the quest. Two to four more patterns plus some XP. Awesome. All right, and then uh, materials in you. This is a book that it wants us to craft. So a regular book plus a pattern. So book is something we, you know what? We should be able to make it because I have collected leather from uh, maybe some traveling llamas that don't appear to be around here anymore. Weird. I wonder what happened to them. Uh, so we need three of that. Let me go and drop those on the ground. And we do this. So three paper, leather, book. All right, book plus this makes, whoa, makes materials and you. Quest complete. So that's going to give us, wait, a second materials and you book? Thanks. Is that really what it just gave me? A second one? It's the same book. Why did it want me to craft a book if it's just going to give it to me? Okay, uh, <laughs> let's calm down just a little bit. Tinker Station. So that is planks. And that, and then the other one is, okay, like a crafting table. So this, this, uh-huh. I need some more wood. I think I, no, I think I have enough. And then it was this, this, plus more of those, right? Yeah, there we go. So there's a tinker station and a part builder, and that should complete this quest. Two to four more patterns, plus some more XP. Awesome. Then tinker's chest and a part chest. Uh, these are optional. We'll probably make those eventually. So creating parts, wait, do we have everything? Part builder, tinker station. Don't I also need like a pattern thing? It's been a minute since I last tinkered. Let's place these down. So part builder, blank pattern. No, I guess the part builder is where you make your pattern. Unless I am confused uh, or unless this has been changed, I am definitely confused. And then I know you can make parts out of flint. We have plenty of flint. We can also make it out of cobblestone. And we have plenty of cobblestone. But let's just try this to see what happens here. So, oh, maybe... I don't understand. Do you need a pattern and then you make this and then, like, it uses a pattern? Let's find out. So, pickaxe head. If we do that... Okay, so we do that. It uses the pattern. We no longer have to make a pattern and then take that pattern that looks like one of these and hold on to it for forever. Interesting. So that just gets consumed. Okay, I believe that is different. I don't remember doing that before. Um, so I know the different parts have different traits. And I think you want to make the handle out of wood, if I remember correctly. Cultivated. I don't remember cultivated does. All right, so we'll do that and then we'll make, I don't know, how about the binding out of cobblestone? Will that allow me to repair this with cobblestone? I don't remember how this works. We'll find out. Uh, I don't have, I don't have a thing that I need here to put these parts together. All right, so let's go tinkers. Because you need a special table in order to put the parts together, I do believe. Man, there is so many different flavors of all these tables. Part builder, tinker station. Is that what we needed? The tinker station? That's what this is, a tinker station. If I put those parts in here, this doesn't do anything. I need something that's going to build the tool. All right, apparently it's been a long time since I have used Tinkers on the Tinker Station. It's these buttons over here that will allow us to choose which tool we want to craft. So we're trying to make a pickaxe, so we do the flint, that, this, and there we go. There is our flint pickaxe. Um, I kind of feel like I reversed this and I won't be able to repair that with cobble, but let's, let's just see. So if I place some things here and I mine, we do some durability damage. I know certain Tinker's tools can be made with different parts and you can repair it with other material. Yeah, I think this is only going to be repairable with flint at this point. Okay, uh, so I want to redo that. So we want to make ourselves a pickaxe head. Um, a pickaxe head out of stone. Then we'll do the binding out of flint. And then we need to get ourselves some more of those uh, blink patterns so we can continue tinkering here. Let me just grab some of this. Like so, this, this, that, that. Okay, so more blink patterns in here. So we have that, that, and then we needed a handle. 
All right, so now we should be able to come over here, click the pickaxe, shift click those all in. That is not a pickaxe. What is that? Oh, is that a Maddox? Maybe that's a Maddox. That, that. All right, so there is our stone pickaxe. Very good. So now I should be able to just place some things down. All right, it doesn't mine much faster. It's basically the same thing as a stone pickaxe, but it's repairable and we don't have to keep replacing it. Awesome. We have infinite cobblestone, so that is great. Um, so there's like modifiers that we can put on there. I don't know. Let's see. If we look at this thing, mining speed four, abilities one. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different things and you can find out a lot of that stuff in these materials in you book. Uh, there's a, I, the last time I used it, there was like, oh, okay, this tells you all the different materials and the, the different abilities you get. If you use it for a head, this one gives you Dwarven. Um, yeah, the last time I used Tinkers, there was like four different books in it. This has like so many pages of Tinkers here. Uh, yeah, I guess it's like not filtered. It's showing like literally every part that's makeable. Uh, so yeah, I remember like you had to craft like three or four different books and you combine them all into the one book that rules them all. <laughs> We're not going to do that right now. Uh, but anyway, we now have a repairable pickaxe. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and make the rest of my tools. Right. So I went ahead and I made the stone pickaxe, which we did together. And then I made a stone mattock, right? So that we can, it does like shoveling and it also chops down trees easier. And then we got a stone sword, which I'm replacing that iron sword, which was non-repairable. Um, so yeah, I saw this thing right here. It actually says this is a pick at disease. I'm not sure what that, <laughs> uh, that's a versatile mining tool. It is effective on rock, dirt, sand, and gravel, but is not sharp enough to mine tougher stone blocks like mini ores. So rock, dirt, sand, and gravel. So this is a shovel pickaxe, right? That's kind of cool, I guess. Um, so you have a shovel pickaxe if we wanted to make that, but we also have the mattock, which is effective on dirt and sand as well. Sand, gravel, and plants, logs, dirt. I believe the mattock, you can also right click on grass. Yeah, and then you can make farmland. Um, so yeah, the, while it's cool that there's this other one, I'm not sure I'm actually going to use it. Then there's also the comma. This will allow you to uh, have a repairable shears if you want to harvest stuff from animals or I guess shear leaves and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I didn't see this dagger. The dagger is a light weapon capable of quick strikes from either hand. Okay, so I guess it's just really fast. Uh, and then there's a regular axe. I'm not sure why you'd want a regular axe when you have like the Maddox or whatever, but yeah, that's an option for you as well. So yeah, lots of neat things that you can get from uh, Tinker's Construct here. Yeah, so one final note on Tinker's, um, stone repair kits are a thing that I used to use a whole lot of. You can repair them anywhere you want. You don't need to repair on, what is it, the, the Tinker station itself. So yeah, normally you want to repair that with cobblestone. You have to put it directly into the... Uh, the tinker station here. So yeah, you place that here, you place that there and you see it's fully repaired. The uh, stone repair kit, you can do that in your crafting grid, right? So you place that there, you place that there and you can repair it on the fly, which is awesome. Thing is though, with this new setup, in order for you to make a repair kit, yeah, you need two material, which has always been, and then you click the button and when you take it out, it uses a pattern. <laughs> so previously, you used to be able to just, as long as you had stone, you could just make repair kits all day long. Now you're consuming patterns for that, which I guess are not super expensive, but it is something to keep in consideration. So it's probably something that I am not going to be using too often uh, for repairing. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate, but yeah, if we go somewhere and we need to repair, we can... Uh, remember to bring a bunch of these with us so we can do that or we can just bring a tinker station with us either way but that is going to do it for this episode guys yep we got finally our sugarcane dirt system fully automated I don't have to touch anything it is automatically collecting automatically turning into dirt and yeah it's pretty awesome if I do say so myself we got a little tinkers going on too which is pretty cool. But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.